At the end of Parshas Emor, we have the whole array of the Chagim, of the festivals and the different laws associated with them. Then we speak about the special light, the Ner Tamid in the Beit Samikdash, the Lechem Apanim, the showbread, the 12 loaves of bread that were taken out a week later and the Kohanim ate them and they were as fresh as when they were made. Then we have a very, very fascinating story. The Torah tells us the son of an Israelite woman went out and he was the son of an Egyptian man among the children of Israel. They fought in the camp, the son of the Israelite woman and the Israelite man. The son of the Israelite woman pronounced the name and blasphemed, so they brought him to Moshe. The name of his mother was Shlomi, son of daughter of Divri of the tribe of Dan. They placed him under guard to clarify themselves through Hashem. Now, as background information, we know that the rabbis tell us there was only one woman in all of the whole exile experience in Egypt who had relations with an Egyptian man. And this was Shlomi's bus different. And this Egyptian man was a man that we know. When Moshe Rabbeinu went out to see his, the plight of his brethren, he saw an Egyptian who was beating up on a Jew. And Moshe Rabbeinu, taking up the cause of the Jewish people, smote the Egyptian and killed him, and that was this fellow's father. This individual came from, his mother was from the tribe of Dan, his father was an Egyptian, and the Torah tells us here, it's almost a story out of nowhere, that this man who was an aimless man, went out, he gets into an argument with another nameless man, he gets upset, he curses God, using the uh, Shema Mepharash, and ultimately, he is stoked. So obviously, we need to understand a little bit of the dynamics of this story. And obviously, there's a lot to say. I'd like to focus, Mir Tzashem, just on one Rashi. The Rashi, on Vayetze ben Ishai Yisraeli. And he went out. Where did he go out from? Right? When you say going out, like Vayetze Yaakov and Beersheba. Yaakov went out of Beersheba. Vayetze Charona. He went somewhere. Where is he going? So Rashi teaches us that the English is in 2 and 3, we'll do the Hebrew in 4. Uvarashi hevi b'divrei chazal. Mehechan yatsa. From where did he leave? Rabbi Levi omer maolamo yatsa. Rabbi Levi said he left his world. Rabbi Brechia omer mi parsha shalomala yatsa. Rabbi Brechia says he left from the parsha above, which means he went out to make fun of the parsha of the Lechem HaPani, which came right before it. You really think that the bread is fresh? Is this the type of bread you serve to a king? Um, and finally, Umatnita Amrami Yatsa He came out and he was found guilty in the base of Moshe. What happened? He went to um, pitch his tent in the tribe of Dan. Amrulo. He said to him, Matif Khan, what are you doing here? Amar Lahem, he said to them, Ibn Danani, I'm from Dan. They said to him, Ish al Diglo Baoto Lovet Avotam Ktiv. It says it goes by the father, not by the mother. They went to Basin of Moshe. This is what they were arguing about, this person from Dan who says, What are you doing pitching your tent here? And in fact the Basin said, You're right. You have to live with the heir of Rab, you have to live with the converts, you can't live in Dan. He got upset and he cursed out God. Now the fascinating thing here is that usually when Rashi brings different interpretations, for those who are familiar with the study of Rashi, Rashi will preface a second interpretation with Dover Acher, another idea. Here Rashi doesn't do that. Here Rashi brings interpretation after interpretation, which seems to imply that somehow all three of these ideas are linked. In fact, the Mayan Beit HaShavar of Schwab, at the end of 6, says, he says, They're not three ideas that contradict each other, but they really are one idea. Because when a person believes in Hashem, you're able to see the kindnesses and the miracles of God. This person left his world. He was no longer able to see the miracles of God. And therefore, because he was a scoffer, the tribe of Dan did not want to go above and beyond and did not want him to enter into their camp. He, they were afraid of what effect that he would have. And when he got upset at this, 
he went and cursed God. I like to try to understand this Rashi or the, the psychological aspects that are going on here on three different levels, obviously all interconnected, and see what lessons we can learn from our lives. It's a very intense year, but I think a very, very fundamental one as well. Vayetze, he went out. Notes Rav Monk, Rav Levi links the words went out with the last word of the previous verse, Olam forever. The word Olam can be translated as world. It may also be related to the word Elam, hit it. A person is considered a microcosm, an Olam Katan, a small world in himself. By blaspheming, he went out of his own small world in which God himself is hidden. By taking himself out of his own world, he is in fact separating himself from that aspect of God which is hidden in himself. Vayetze, he's leaving the godly aspect of self, which helps explain the Sefer Chinuch, who discusses in detail.